everybody welcome to stocks for breakfast welcome to stock trading pro my name is pete renzulli we have a ton of stuff to cover this week we have the fomc announcement but probably i think the most exciting thing for most people is the fact that we are setting up for a bounce in the stock market this week ahead of the fomc announcement ahead of a lot of earnings that are coming out this week i'm going to show you exactly how i am calling the bounce in the market why i'm calling a bounce in the market and the exact levels that I'm expecting the market to actually bounce up to. And I'm specifically talking about the S&P 500. We're gonna kind of put that into a big pot of order flow, both bullish and bearish order flow. We're gonna break down the market. We're gonna go sector by sector, give you a big quick overview on where the money is hiding right now as the stock market's going down and what that means for position sizing. I think that's really one of the biggest things that we wanna talk about is what is the proper position size when stocks are and the market's going down, but a few stocks actually catch a bid and they're worth buying. So bearish market, bullish stocks. How do you trade those ideas? There's a lot on the table this week, and I'm really, really excited to be involved. Uh, so stick around. I'll be back in just one second. OK. OK, so obviously, thank you so much for joining me here. We got a bunch of stuff to cover. Um, obviously, everything we talk about here is for educational purposes. Up to you to make that final decision it's up to me to help make better decisions at least point you in that direction so let's hop right into it i want to really talk about what's going on in a big way this week from a uh, i guess you would say macroeconomic perspective to put some kind of fancy terminology on that uh, and if we kind of break down the economic calendar for the week this is really the big dog right here the fomc statement and then um, exactly what happens after that. So the big things I want to point out here is there's actually two different announcements, for lack of a better way of putting it. And the first one is the actual announcement of what Jerome Powell and the FOMC plans to do. And I think as of right now, as of this moment, no shock. <laughs> They're not expected to do anything. Uh, what will be the big shock, and let me just go back to that again, just to really pull that into the picture, uh, is right here is the 2.30 press conference is usually what everybody's looking for. And that's when they give the language of what they're talking about. So it's kind of like very similar to what we're about to talk about with earnings seasons, where there's the announcement of the actual earnings, which is comparing it. So I just use a round number. So let's say that they expected to do a billion dollars and that's what everybody's looking for. What do they actually do compared to the expectation? So in other words, that last quarter, they might have done 900 million. And this quarter, they're expected to do a billion. So if a company does, let's say 950, so it's higher than the previous quarter, but lower than what was expected. So that's going to have movement in both directions. And just to give you a little bit of a heads up, because we are in a massive earnings season right now. So we kind of bring that into the focus this week as well. There's some pretty big earnings coming out this week. It's critical that you understand the actual announcement, what happens. And I like to really bring things down to where it's really kind of simple to understand what's going on. There's what's expected, and then there's what actually happens. And the second part is really where um, both earnings volatility as well as economic data happens. It's what was expected, but what actually happened. And you want to, that's kind of like a writer down, or you definitely want to write that down. So as earnings season's unfolding, very similar to tying that back to the FOMC announcement, everybody is expecting Jerome Powell to do nothing. Everybody's expecting, especially with last week's uh, GDP number that came in much stronger than expected. I believe it was a two-year high gross domestic product. Kind of throws a monkey wrench in there for them doing interest rates in the same way that they've been hanging in there. So um, that's what's kind of on tap right now. But I want to kind of tie that back to what's going on in the market. But here's really the big thing I want to talk about. What they talk about at 2.30, 30 minutes after they announce the FOMC statement, which is likely to be nothing. So remember, that's what's expected. The 2.30 announcement is going to be about what they're actually planning to do. So if they change any of that language, we could see tremendous volatility. Now, the big part of that, which is kind of tying it back into position sizing, bullish stocks in a bearish market. The market is kind of like an anchor on the market right now. And you might be finding some ideas that you like to be a buyer of, but here's kind of an advanced lesson in trading. And I just want to make sure I say hello to my buddy, uh, John Bates. John, how are you today? Love you, pal. Um, so when you are buying stocks in a bearish tape, so the tape meaning the bigger part of the market is pulling stocks down, 
it's smart. I don't want to say critical, but it's just smart trading that you lower your initial position size. So the way that we like to talk about this is there's perfect trades and then everything that moves away from perfect sets up different trade management. So the two factors that it mostly pushes into is position sizing and initial expected profit targets. Now, again, you never want to put a limitation on how much you could make, but you do need to put a price out there that says, okay, if I accept this risk, what is a likely target and what is the right position size? So maybe you could just raise your hand, whether you're watching this live or you're watching it on a replay, ask yourself, do you make the mistake, which is a very expensive mistake of trading the same share size or the same dollar amount per trade all of the time where you just don't understand that we should be stepping up or stepping down based on the market conditions in that moment. So if I can give you a visualization, if we kind of work our way over into the charts, and we'll, we'll stick kind of with the S&P 500, if we can go over here into this pocket of opportunity, which is basically from May through the end of July, a lot of really good things were happening. And you could see week after week, we were making highs or just pausing and taking off again versus the way things have been over here. So if you've actually found some bullish ideas in this bearish market, let's actually use Altstate as an example, which has actually had a really good clean breakout and rallied. It's critical that you adjust your position size based on the way that's unfolding. If the market conditions are perfect, where you're going up in the market, you're going up in your individual sector, and the stock that you're finding is actually going up this week also, that's a little bit better condition. And then your conviction level should be going up a little bit higher. So let's kind of tie that back into the way that the market is actually looking heading into this week. So this is the last four weeks of price action. You can see it's mostly been bearish. One little pocket of opportunity in here from energy because of what's going on in the Middle East, the unfortunate situation that's going on in the Middle East, right? So you have to ask yourself, based on your activity level and based on how you were reading the market, are you judging what the market is giving you and then adjusting up or down the amount of money you're willing to put into that stock trade? It, maybe you did have the best stock picks now, right? You might have the best stock picks at that moment, but based on what's going on in the market, what is the proper allocation of your hard earned money? So I just want to give you a little bit of a general, general numbers, right? So we kind of like to use 1%, 3%, 5%. So let's kind of tie this back to what we're talking about right now. Keep it really simple, but actionable, right? You don't want to think too hard when you're trading. You want to be like, damn, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do, right? So when the market's perfect, we have 1%, 3%, 5%. Everything looks great, green, right? Everything looks awesome. That would be more towards 5% allocation. So let's just say for argument's sake, you have X amount of capital. You would go more because more and obvious are on the table at that moment. So remember, the only reason we choose to accept risk is because the reward potential is likely. And if everything is perfect, our conviction level should go up. So maybe we put a little bit more into that deal, into that trade. I keep calling it a deal, but into that trade. As we move away from perfect, and I want to explain what perfect means right now. So let's say that we're moving away from perfect. But let's say that, again, just as an example, let's say that this particular week, there were some sectors that were obviously bullish, but at the same time, the market was going down. So that's still a pretty good opportunity, but not perfect. The market's going down, but a group of stocks is actually going up. So that's still a pretty good situation, but not perfect. So we might go from 5% down to 3%. So we're willing to put a little bit less into the trade because it's, there's still a pocket of order flow and even sector specific order flow. And I'm gonna, I'll show you what that means in just one second and how you can watch a new training that I just did. When you have sector specific order flow, but the market's not obvious, it's still okay, but not necessarily where you get a little more aggressive. Now we're going to work our way all the way down to the market conditions that we have right now, where most of the market is down, most of the sectors are down, and we're kind of going way up the top where we're looking at industry groups and sector, uh, excuse me, industry specific ideas. And I want to show you what that looks like right now because we kind of break that down when we work our way into sector rotation.
But actually, before we do that, I just want to break down the assessment of the market and actually what we're expecting to have happen this week. We spent quite a bit of time talking about the average true move in the S&P 500. And last week, we almost hit it on the money. So here's the big thing I want to, I want to show you right now. If you're a regular viewer of our channel, and I hope you are, hit that subscribe button. And if we do a good job, give us a thumbs up. You know that we talk about the bearish side of the market and how far stocks push down. So I just want to come on the screen again one more time, because this is really what separates somebody who is completely in control of what they're looking at from somebody who's kind of like, like just getting beat up on all the price action that's kind of unfolding. Every single stock has what we call an average true move. An average true move, there's two kinds. There's if it's in a bullish move or if it's in a bearish move. Your stock, any stock you're trading, if it's in a bullish price action, there's a certain amount that that stock typically moves in what we might call momentum. So if we push up, find an entry, and then push up again, each one of those pushes are typically the same amount for each individual stock. So that's why we call it the average true move. So why is that important? Well, when you know the average true move, that's going to give you two very important things. It's going to give you, number one, what is the likely profit potential at that particular moment? And number two, it's going to point out to you when you should not buy because it's too late. Now, think about this. How many times have you bought a stock? It went up and as soon as you bought, boom, it came right back down. And then it did what you expected to do after you got stopped out. Right. I think we can all raise our hand when you understand order flow, which is the dominant side of the market and go into your favorite stocks and just look at it really quick and we could do it in the spy here what does it normally do after it pushes pauses and pushes so the push the push and look at these these are almost exact and the push before it pauses again that's the bullish side of the market but right now the market's in a bearish tone so on the bearish side of the market the pushes down are the dominant side and you want to write this down because it's kind of important the bearish pushes in the S&P 500 are 30 points. Now remember, something that's very important, it's the average true move. Sometimes it might go a little further, sometimes it might go a little bit less, that's the average of where you're gonna say something should happen at that price because that's what normally happens. Now here's a big lesson. We actually just had our uh, live event last week. We we're down here in South Florida. And one of the biggest things that came out of the event, I wanna kind of give you like a behind the scenes lesson here, is that traders, in the stock market who predict, who are concerned with where things are going to be in the future, who are forecasting and guessing where things are going to go, are typically the ones that struggle the most because let's face it, nobody knows what's gonna happen a week from now. Our job, good traders say, what is happening right now? How long has it been happening? Is there a specific sector that's happening? So, for example, energy sector, industrials, consumer defensive, technology, those are the sectors. What's happening now? How long has it been happening? How do I know when it changes? When you approach the stock market in that manner, you are never guessing. You are simply paying attention, which makes trading 100 times less stressful because you are never worried about whether or not the next trade's going to work. You simply say, here's what's happening. Here's what I need to see. And then you have action that's planned out telling you exactly what to do. I know that's, that sounds interesting, right? So what I want to introduce you to, I want to give you a chance to go really deep into this topic absolutely free. I actually have a new 50-minute video that explains order flow stacking. It explains sector-specific order flow stacking, exactly what I just talked about. It also talks about the profit maximizer. The profit maximizer is after you find a really good idea, you then go out to the market and say, okay, we got a great entry. Let's now see how much we could make on this trade without predicting where it's going to stop. That's a very powerful thing to know because once you get into a trade and you let price action itself tell you when it's done, as opposed to saying, well, I made enough money and I'm out. Well, you know how many times you raise your hand. If you, how many times did you put a trade on? You got out and just kept going. The profit maximizer helps you avoid 
the pain of regret by holding the ideas that are still working. So I just want to point this out to you. Now, what I'm about to show you, there's actually a link below in the description where you can um, sign up for this. It's absolutely free. doesn't cost you anything. It's a 50-minute video. So if you hop on over into this one here, and you can actually see there's some, uh, some really cool stuff in there where I show you my brokerage statement and what I made during this particular 30-day window, um, how, what goal that I personally shoot for. Maybe it's the same type of goal that you want. Uh, and you can actually see all the kind of stuff that's in here. So if what we're talking about right now is kind of exciting for you, I'm going to now show you how I implement it and how I'm game planning for the market for this entire week. So make sure you click down into the description. 100% free. It's a 50-minute video. Take a lot of notes. It'll be absolutely worth your time. And if you have any follow-up questions, you can also leave a link, um, leave a comment here below the video or reach out to our team. So if we kind of continue to work our way over into what's going on this week, obviously the FOMC announcement is big. Now, what's kind of cool about this on investing.com, you can actually see gold prices are a part of what's going on. So what ends up happening is, and I believe we talked about this recently, where a lot of companies earlier in the year that have good balance sheets, so they're really solid companies, high net worth, lower debt, such as Apple and JP Morgan and a couple of other companies like that, a lot, of a lot of traders, investors were going over towards those companies because they were kind of stable, right? But now interest rates are continuing to go up and it's starting to hit and affect all of the types of companies that are out there in the market right now. But <laughs> there's one particular group of stocks that we go from now market to sector way down a little bit deeper into industry groups, which are gold stocks. So depending on what happens this week with the FOMC announcement and the way corporate earnings unfold this week, if the market should happen to have another leg down, and I'm going to show you what I'm expecting this week, which is kind of cool, right? If the market should get a little bit more bearish and go down, gold stocks would be the historical old school flight to safety. So that's what we're going to take a look at right now. So let's actually first map out what we're looking at to see happen in the market this week so they can get a little bit of an idea, right? With the bearish tone of the market right now and the FOMC announcement this week, there's a pretty good chance we're going to have a slow drift up into the previous resistance level. So we're actually kind of seeing that already. You can see that the market and the S&P is actually up a little bit. Now here's where you keep your technical analysis simple but repeatable so you can increase your conviction level about what you're looking at in the market. Now you can see, I don't have 100 indicators on my chart. I want to be able to make good, fast decisions. And all I'm looking for is where did buyers or sellers do something significant? So now here's the important part. So remember how I just mentioned the S&P 500 and the average true move? Well, if you could take a look here from this move down to here, it's basically 30 points before we started to rally. So again, we're not predicting. Nothing I do is prediction. It's paying attention. How is it still valid? How do I know when it changes, right? So now we push down in the S&P 500 down to within a dollar of that average true move and we're starting to rally. So what I'm looking for this week heading into the FOMC announcement as earnings unfold, I'm looking for a move back up to this resistance level. Now, here's the thing that is incredibly important for you to write down. That's the price action we're looking for. If we get that price action on heavier volume, that is what traders on Wall Street know as accumulation. Accumulation simply means in institutions are starting to buy stocks. Now, normally, a sneaky kind of accumulation is when we go sideways for a while and there's heavy volume during that churning. It's kind of going sideways with heavy volume and hasn't quite broken out yet. If we see a heavy volume rally, and then a pause at that 421 level, which is right here. If we rally heavy and pause at this level, then we're going to be looking for this downtrend to finally be broken, which you can actually see here, right? We got this move to the downside here, which would take a lot of, for that to happen, right? So what am I doing right now? We're kind of saying, here's what normally happens. This is the important part here. If this happens, then I plan to do this. That's very different from where a lot of people lose conviction and doubt themselves in the market because they are looking to predict and they're only focused on their prediction. We don't do that. Smart traders don't do that. Hopefully you don't do that either. Where you say, this is what I'm expecting. Now we're going to go to the second part of the trade and how that's going to unfold with the market. So that's the first scenario. 
This is what the difference is between those who struggle and those who are consistent, let's say. We are open to having a bias and have a roadmap for what should happen. But here's the key. We have a plan for what should happen and how to trade it if it does. But that same roadmap, if it does not unfold, we're perfectly okay with doing nothing. And I know I'm talking to a lot of people watching this video right now who trade just for the sake of trading. Great traders, profitable, consistent, long-term traders only allocate their money when there's a strong chance there's a, that the likelihood of their profit target being hit is on the table. Now, we want to layer even deeper than that today where we said bearish market but bullish stocks. So those are still valid ideas, but we would lower our position size. So what I'd like to really see you do is challenge yourself to say, am I paying attention to what the market is doing and how that affects how much I plan to put into the start of that trade? Are you adjusting up or down based on you get closer to perfect or further away from perfect? Or quite frankly, maybe even nothing to do. I got to be honest with you, raise your hand if you found the last four weeks, especially October, to be tough. It has been tough. It's not you. Trust me. If you know what you're doing and you have a strategy, the last four weeks in the market have been pretty tough. And you know, we'll obviously take a quick deep dive looking at that again, kind of right here, right? So what is that setting up for this week? All right. That means the S&P 500 melting back up to the 421 level at best. Now, here's where we see if then, if then. If the market should drift sideways, which means it goes down and goes sideways instead of going down and rallying. So instead of rallying this week, we go sideways. This is very important language. That means that bears are holding the offer. That's a very important language to learn which means supply is continuing to be dumped and they're not allowing it to rally, which is not a good sign to be a buyer. And that's kind of what we're seeing here, right? So the type of the type of rally we have this week, should we get one, which as of right now we are, but there's still a ways to go before the market opens, will be very important and likely dictate the price action for the remainder of 2023. I know that's a bold statement, but I'm going to stick by it. If by some unexpected nature we get a heavy volume rally, which would mean accumulation. I just explained that to you. We would need to be prepared with new stocks to buy so we're ready to capitalize on the opportunity. Now, the quote that I'm about to give you, I want you to take a snapshot of this because this is where a lot of really smart people just mess up. I don't know if there's any other way to say it, right? So here's what we're talking about. I had a mantra on my trading floor in New York City. I'd rather be prepared for an opportunity that never comes than not prepared when one does. So this week is a perfect example of that with increased volatility expected and every word Jerome Powell says to be dissected to the nth degree, a little extra elbow grease on your game plan sessions will go a long way. So I just really wanna make this clear for you so that you know exactly what you're doing this week before the week even starts. And then as the week starts to unfold, you will be prepared with an answer before you need to make a decision. Now, why is this so important? Well, raise your hand if you're sitting on a really big losing trade that you're hoping, praying, comes back in your favor. That happened because you didn't prepare and you weren't ready to make a decision. And then it became an emotional decision that you just don't want to get out of that trade. And here's where it gets really crazy <laughs> is that you're afraid to get out of a losing position because you're afraid that as soon as you get out, it's going to go up. Get that garbage out of your head. If it's a losing position, here's what good traders do. They scale back or get out and then go look for another opportunity to make that money back as opposed to hoping the stock turns around. That's bad trading. So if you happen to be sitting on a big losing position, just think about what's the right thing to do in this moment and stop being afraid that if that thing turns around as soon as you get out, that's not good trading. You don't have any control over that situation. You want 100% control over your money. And if you are hoping somebody does you a favor, you're not trading. Let's just put that out there right now. So just think about that really deeply. Good traders scale back, have a little bit left just to watch it, read the tape, or just get out and go to look for another opportunity. So now let's kind of map out a very tough market with some ideas that are valid for this week. So now we're going to kind of get into sector rotation and industry groups. 
So if we kind of bring it back into what ideas we're looking at, obviously we can see what kind of market we're facing, right? Most sectors took a beating last week, right? And closed near the low. So new bullish ideas from individual stocks showing relative strength. And we're going to define what that it means. If that is a new trading term for you, relative strength means that those stocks were strong compared to the general market. And in this case, we're focusing on a few healthcare stocks. So I want to really think about what's happening right now. Healthcare stocks and a little bit of insurance stocks have been showing relative strength. So we're going deep into the market where it's not perfect, but we're looking for ideas that show strength while the market goes down. So here's the theory, and here's the way that everybody trades. If those stocks were holding up when the market went down, therefore, when the market goes up, which it's doing right now pre-market, if those strongs that strong stocks that were holding when the market went down, then they should be the first ones to go up the strongest if the market catches a bid. I'll show you what I mean by that. All right. Since we're in the heat of earnings seasons, it's imperative we note that when companies are scheduled, that's another big thing, right? We know that earnings season is coming out right now. There's a lot of big companies reporting. Each of those stocks report soon. APLS has the most potential. Remember what I said before, if guidance exceeds expectations. So these are the five healthcare stocks that I'm watching this week. And we kind of mapped out the scenario. So you can see earnings coming out. And we're looking at APLS to get above 52. Now, here's where it gets really, really specific. Remember, if then, if this happens, then I plan to do this. No guesswork. You want to be in control, all right? The trade setup I'm planning, again, before it happens, if it happens, um, is a 52 breakout. After earnings, looking for a pause with a potential run up to the gap fill around 84. So I'm letting earnings coming out. I'm looking for it to punch above 52, and if it pauses above 52, then I'm looking for a run up there. If earnings come out and they're bearish and none of that happens, then I'm skedaddling and I'm not even going to do anything. I'm just looking for another trade, all right? So working our way through, CI traded sideways, which is the opposite of holding the offer. Holding the bid is a scenario where it goes up and goes sideways. So CI, we're looking for it to remain above 300. You can actually see here earnings is also coming out. But we paused here. So now think about relative strength. Let's actually pull this chart up in a little bit more detail. Where the market went down the last five days, boom, this stock went sideways. So that's what relative strength looks like. And that's what holding the bid looks like. So if the market bounces and the sector bounces to get a little bit more bigger picture, then these stocks that held the bid should be the first ones to rally because they did not go down when the market did. Okay, so let's kind of keep working our way through. Also, industrial stocks. Now, again, this is really where we make a distinction here that's very important. Remember that video that I just gave you the link for? Again, it's in the description. There's two types of order flow. There's individual stocks order flow, and then there's sector-specific order flow. So all of the stocks in energy versus one stock in energy. But the first part of that is how long has order flow been obvious? So in other words, Let's say, how long have institutions been buying that stock? Is it happening for months <laughs> or is it just happening for a couple of days? So the industrial stocks that we found some order flow is just coming off of recent earnings. So that is the first sign of stacked order flow, the very, very initial stages of it. So if we now can recognize that the institutions have just started to consider putting money into these ideas with bullish gaps after earnings and they're holding there. That means now it's our job to say, okay, show me that you're going to stick around. And that's where we look for follow-up order flow. So if we take a look at some of these ideas in the industrial stocks, RTX, for example, was in bearish order flow, um, but then kind of had a nice pop after what's going on in the Middle East. But here's the thing. Earnings catalyst then came out. And this is what's going on. So this was the first gap. And now earnings came out and now it's holding the bid. So again, visualize the market went down the last week hard. This stock after earnings gapped up and stayed there. So there was follow-up buying, not allowing the stock to go down. So now you can clearly see the level that I'm watching here and looking for the next move. So what we're doing is we're setting up the highest probability idea for the next move. Okay. And one thing I really hope is coming across in everything we're talking about right now, our job is to determine 
what is probably going to happen next and what we are definitely going to do. That's a very distinct statement because what we're talking about is what's likely going to happen based on what's already happening and what is the proper risk for that moment. When you put those pieces together and you kind of, again, I hope you watch that video, you put the pieces together of order flow stacking, sector specific order flow stacking, and then in that video, we get a lot into the profit maximizer, which is holding good trades longer. Boy, you really start, to, your conviction level just goes through the roof when you're looking at the market. And I'm going to tell you why. Not because you now have the ability to predict, but because you're better at noticing more. And raise your hand if the market is overwhelming. If the stock market is overwhelming and confusing, it simply means that you don't have a simple map to put over the market to say, this is what I'm looking for. When I see it, then I will do something. Now here's the, here's the part where everybody messes it up. This is what I'm looking for. I don't see it. And then you trade anyway. That's the little mistakes. We just keep throwing all this money away for no reason. When you know what you're looking for, you're never lost. I promise you that. And I don't say that lightly. All right. So let's continue to move on through. Waste management, again, we're up into the industrial stocks right now. Waste management and general dynamics, each are similar price actions to what we see in RTX here. But here's the key point. Please remember this. These are short-term catalysts, which is earnings news. So we just talked about early stages of order flow means initial position size, which means lower position size. Do you see how it's like step on the gas, step on the brake, step on the gas, step on the brake, Bam, the road opened up and let's make some money on this thing. That's the profit maximizer, all right? So for now, that means lowered initial position size, looking for new order flow to support the momentum. Momentum being the most recent price action, all right? So waste management is an interesting one where clearly in bearish order flow, but also made a higher low, which means that buyers stepped up and did not let it go down. Then earnings came out. Here, this big, giant, beautiful green candle, and now the stock has paused. So if you remember, everything that we do, we're looking for a push and a pause. The pause is where we find the optimal entry. The push is where we use the average true move for profit targets, initial profit targets. The average true move is how we justify accepting risk. After a stock reaches our average true move or initial profit target, then we switch to profit maximizer and see how much more we can get out of that trade. Now, leveling up even one layer deeper is that there's different kinds of profit maximizers, but there's only two. When everything looks perfect and everything is green and things are just kind of going in that direction and you can't mess it up if you try, we use a trend profit maximizer where we're looking for a much bigger move and we give the stock a little bit more breathing room. In the current market conditions where the market's going down, but a few stocks are going up, we'll be more inclined to use what we call a momentum profit maximizer, which means that we are more likely to book profits a little sooner where we'd be looking to book profits on a pause as opposed to adding to a pause. Is that a lot? Well, watch the video one more time and take a lot of good notes because this is really the stuff that puts you back in control of the market. Think about this. You're reading the market determining how much that means you should put into the deal and at the same time tells you what kind of profits to go after. That's a pretty complete setup, right? There's no guessing. What is happening? What do I want to put in and how do I plan to manage it? If you're stressed out of your mind in the market right now, this is probably the pieces that you're missing. Now, again, I want to put it into context. Even with that perfect roadmap, looking at the market, it has been a little challenging. So you really needed to do a little bit more game planning to find some good ideas. So remember, initial signs of a reversal call for initial position size, all right? Moving along, Lockheed Martin reported well and is up over 12% for the last few weeks. You can see that here. This one's got a little bit less upside potential. It's got all of this selling. It's got to get through that before it makes the next move. But what we're trying to do is set up ideas that have good relative strength. Now we kind of work our way down really deep into the market and find some ideas at specific industry groups and REIT stocks, which are real estate stocks, real estate investment trust, AMT broke longer term bearish order flow. Again, 
held a higher low, which means that buyers stepped up and the selling was done prior to the earnings. Big earnings, energy candlestick leading to the next move. So now we're looking for this stock, which broke the downtrend, had a big energy candlestick on good volume after earnings and traded into a pause on Friday. That's a new idea that we're going to be considering looking at this week. Now, finishing up, obviously, we just talked about gold stocks, right? Gold is a big part of the conversation right now. So I'm also game planning gold stocks. And the one at the top of my list are these three, but AEM is the one that I'm watching for. So you can actually see here what I'm looking for in AEM, the bigger downtrend, the failed breakdown, the rally off that failed breakdown, the market closed week on Friday. Stock went down, recovered. I'm still not looking to do anything until it gets over 50. So hopefully you understand now what I'm doing is before the week even starts. And I do this every day, by the way. I do this for everybody in our community. I am giving you the map from the market to the sectors, to the industry group, to the exact stocks I'm looking at that day. And I'm showing you exactly how I plan to manage them from entry to stop loss to where I add and where my initial target is to justify that trade. So I hope that you watch this. This stuff is new to you. I hope that you watch this video more than one time. Take some good notes. If you want to really go deeper into this for absolutely free, make sure you click that link in the description to watch the order flow stacking training. It's 50 minutes where I go into this in a lot more detail. So that's kind of how I'm mapping out the market this week. Bearish market looking for a short term rally. And the volume that we see is going to be the significant driver. All right. So that's how I have my week all mapped out. Hopefully I just gave you a little bit more clarity to what's going on this week and maybe expanded your mind a little bit on how to trade it. So if you could please do me a favor, if we did a good job, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If this is the kind of stuff you like, hit that subscribe button. We've got a bunch of new training coming out and uh, let's go get it. Let's have an awesome, awesome week of trading this week. That's the roadmap. Watch it one more time. Go watch that free training and let's make it an amazing week. All right. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you so much for joining me.